So we are going to look at uh, when synchronous generator is under load, how does it behave? Uh, there are two types of loads um, that you can connect to synchronous generator. Uh, one is isolated load, like what we discussed in the last example, where a load is connected over here, either it's a resistor, it's a you know a impede, uh, impedance, uh, uh, resistor and reactance, basically uh, inductive or capacitive, whatever. So that's an isolated load. And it's a single circuit, um, a single loop circuit, and you can apply Ohm's law to calculate pretty much everything here, right? Uh, so that's called the isolated load. Now, uh, the other load, which is more important, is when you connect your synchronous generator to a grid. Grid is called uh, infinite bus. Now, there are many generators that are connected to grid and supplying power to the grid. Uh, grid has much more uh, power uh, uh, because all the generators are connected to the grid. So grid ha has super superiority over an individual generator. So what happens as soon as you connect your synchronous generator to a grid or infinite bus, basically grid takes over the generator. Uh, whatever the frequency of the grid is, generator frequency becomes the same and whatever voltage of the grid line is, uh, generator voltage becomes the same. So as soon as you connect the generator to the grid, this voltage and this voltage become same and the frequency becomes same. So what, what happens is, of course, since these two voltages become same, there is no current that will flow in uh, from the generator towards the grid. Now the circuit is called to be floating at that point. The circuit is floating at that point. So how does the power flow from the generator to the grid? There are two ways. One way is that you basically increase the speed of um, rotation. Well, actually, that, that's going to be the second thing we're going to discuss. Let's discuss the first thing. You increase the current in the uh, in uh, to the electromagnet that is the rotating field right you increase that current and what's going to happen with the increase of the current is the voltage the, the uh, flux is going to increase and that flux is going to increase the induced voltage value induced voltage value so observe this is right now floating 12 kilo volt here 12 kilo volt here right E naught and E is 12 kilo volt, I is zero. So this is in the floating state. So once you increase the field current, I x, then you increase the flux and you increase E naught. But it will still be in phase with this voltage. So the phase is not going to change. Only the magnitude of the induced voltage is going to change. And when the magnitude will change, if you're increasing the flux, that means E0 is going to increase. It's going to become more than infinite bus. As you can see in this phasor diagram, the terminal voltage or the grid voltage is 12 kilo volt and the induced voltage is 16 kilo volt. Um, and the, the current is going to flow from, um, from the synchronous generator towards the infinite bus. But your synchronous reactance is what j whatever the value j let's say 5 ohm or something right anything so when you calculate the current what will be the current i is equal to um, 12 kilo volt or 16 kilo volt e naught minus e minus 12 kilo volt over xs right which is j 5 ohm or whatever it is right so what will be your result your result is going to be I is equal to whatever magnitude is there, right? 16 minus 12, 4, 4 divided by 5. So magnitude 4 kilo volt, 4000 divided by 5. That's the magnitude. And the angle or phase is going to be negative 90 degrees, right? So the current that is coming out is going to be out of phase by negative 90 degree with respect to both the induced voltage and the terminal voltage. And the voltage drop is, of course, 4 kilovolt voltage drop is um, across your uh, induct uh, synchronous reactance. So since 
the input voltage and the current that is coming out they have a phase difference of negative 90 degrees current is lagging the induced voltage and ex and e by negative 90 degrees what's going to happen when you calculate the power so this is your power right three times for three phases three times e naught i cosine of 90 that is the phase difference between e naught and i cosine and is zero so your real power is zero and reactive power is e naught i sine 90 three times e naught i so if you increase the field current it will increase the flux which will increase the induced voltage but your phase difference is going to be same between the induced voltage and your grid voltage in that case only the reactive power is going to flow out of your synchronous generator and no real power will be supplied to the grid only the reactive power will be supplied to the grid now this is called over excitation of generator if you reduce the field current that is it goes below the voltage of infinite bus again the phase is not going to be changed but what's going to happen the power flow is going to change its direction right the power flow is going to change its direction now in this case um, in this case since um, uh, the current coming out of uh, the generator is, is uh, lagging 90 degrees uh, with, the, uh, with the voltage value the source is going to look at the infinite bus as it is comprised of inductive load because the current is lagging by 90 degrees now if e naught goes down if you change i x if you re reduce i x you reduce the flux e naught goes down again phase difference is going to be same between the uh, e and e naught the current direction is going to be opposite the current is going to flow from the infinite bus to e naught and is still what's going to happen is still active power is going to be zero because cosine negative 90 is still zero and reactive power is going to be negative 3 e naught i now remember when the reactive power is negative for capacitive type of loads right so the source is gonna see the infinite bus as it is a capacitive load and the power is reactive power is the capacitive power again no active power is supplied in that case this is called under excitation of the synchronous generator so when the active power will be supplied because active power is what we need uh, in general so the active power is supplied when you change the speed of rotation of the rotor speed of rotation if you increase the speed of rotation what's going to happen that whatever voltage was here 12 kilo volt right which was the voltage of the uh, infinite bus uh, when you increase the speed of the turbine this voltage will be achieved earlier than what it would have been achieved it if the turbine would be moving at the nominal speed so now when this voltage is achieved earlier than what it would be uh, basically you are creating a phase difference between e naught and e so observe over here this phase difference and this phase difference is created if you change the speed of rotation not the value of the uh, current but the speed of rotation and this phase is called torque angle torque angle so now when you change the speed you create a torque angle uh, observe magnitude is still the same magnitude is not different so e naught is going to be in this case 12 angle delta kilovolt in this case they are showing delta to be 19.2 degrees so this is going to be 12 angle 19.2 degrees kilovolt and how much current is going to be supplied i will be equal to e naught minus e equals over x of s right now the e naught in this case is 12 
angle 19.2 which is delta just for the example minus 12,000 over j uh, whatever the value of j is 5 this is how you're gonna calculate the value of i in this case current will not have an angle of negative 90 or 90 degrees it will have some angle between 90 degrees or 0 and you will have the real power supplied as you can see in this example so a three-phase synchronous generator is connected to power grid the synchronous reactance is 9 ohm if induced voltage is 12 kilo volt line to line now remember induced voltage and the bus voltage will be the same if you if you are rotating if you're changing the speed of rotation they will be same now if you're also changing uh, the uh, current that is going into the electromagnet then the magnitude will also change so it is possible to change both magnitude and the torque angle that is if you increase the current or decrease the current and you also change the speed of rotation then both will change magnitude of the induced voltage as well as phase of the induced voltage but if you just change the speed of rotation only the only the uh, phase of uh, the induced voltage is going to change but the magnitude is not going to change and this magnitude will be same as the magnitude of the uh, voltage of the induced uh, of the infinite bus so the question is asking you calculate the active power that the machine delivers when the torque angle is 30 degrees so since it is not given to you we can assume all the values in uh, are in rms because remember whenever you're calculating power you need the rms values so torque angle is 30 degrees reactance is 9 i ohm or j 9 ohm whatever you want to call make sure do not forget j and the magnitude of the line to neutral voltage is 12 kilo volt divided by square root of 3 remember when you're solving um, you have to solve for um, line to neutral not line to line and since it is line to line was given to you then we convert that line to line into line to neutral so this e naught between phase and neutral is uh, 6928.2 volt and the same voltage is going to be at the indu at the infinite bus so e is equal to the line to neutral voltage induced line to neutral voltage so first thing uh, what uh, we do is we convert e naught ln into from polar to rectangular coordinates because e naught is what e naught is 6000 oops where did my marker go e naught is 6928.2 angle 30 degrees volt this is E naught, right? So we went ahead and we converted this value since I'm using MATLAB uh, and MATLAB can only take the rectangular coordinate. So I converted everything into rectangular coordinate uh, from polar. And then I just went ahead and calculate the value of the current, which is just using Ohm's law, E naught ln minus E. Uh, e remember is still 12, uh, uh, 12 kilo volt line to line or uh, 6928.2 kilo volt with the angle of zero degrees. Right, so that's our uh, reference angle. Infinite bus is our reference, remember that. So it has an angle of zero degrees. So you subtract uh, this, basically you subtract 6928.2 from this value divided by J5 ohm. And this will be your result. Uh, so the total complex power delivered, um, it is easy to calculate the complex power and then the real part of that is gonna be active power uh, imaginary part is going to be the reactive power the total complex power is three times uh, e naught line to neutral and the conjugate of the current and it will come out to be this value hence the total active power which is uh, what is required is eight megawatt and if the re uh, reactive power is also required then of course the total reactive power is um, 200 uh, 2.143 uh, mega volt ampere react uh, so this is how you're going to solve uh, these problems with the infinite bus and once again remember if uh, both um, I think there is one problem in the homework which asks you that uh, both the, the um, excitation current to the field as well as the speed of the rotation has changed in that case you will have uh, both 
the magnitude of the induced voltage as well as the torque angle both will change and you're gonna solve based on uh, that value so this is the last topic of 16th chapter and I hope you will do the problems and they are pretty straightforward problems but again if there is any any question you can always contact me